Hi there and welcome back to National 5 Biology, Unit 1 Cell Biology. In this lesson we're going to be looking at key area 3, which is DNA and the production of proteins. So, looking back in the first couple of key areas, we have previously looked at cell biology. What you should hopefully remember from cell biology is that a cell contains a nucleus, and the nucleus contains genetic information. That's what we're going to be focusing on for the rest of this lesson. So, in this first example here, we want to look at the difference in size in genetic information. So, in this cell, there is a nucleus. When you look very, very close into a nucleus, you will find chromosomes, which we'll look at in more detail later on. Chromosomes, if you look into them, they are made up of genes, and the genes are strands of DNA. DNA is something you might have come across before in TV shows or movies, but we're going to look at what DNA actually does. So the point of this slide is to show you the difference in size, with the nucleus being the biggest, chromosomes smaller, genes smaller, and DNA being the smallest part of genetic information. This slide goes into a bit more detail. This is something that we'd often use in classes just to show you the different structures. So if we look at the cell, we have the nucleus. Again, like I said, once you look into the nucleus, you look at a chromosome. However, the chromosome is made up of chromatids, which are held together by a centromere in the middle. Once that unravels and we start looking at the genes, so these strands of DNA, this sort of strange twisted ladder shape is made up of a backbone and then bases, which are in the middle. So if you imagine the sides of the ladder as a backbone and the middle rungs are bases, and the bases are the next thing that we are going to be looking at. So, with DNA, this twisted ladder I've looked at has a certain name. It's double-stranded helix. And this structure is held together by these bases, these complementary bases that we're going to look at in the next couple of slides. The important thing to know as well is that the point of DNA, the point of the genetic information, is that it's used to make proteins. And we're going to look at what these proteins are uh, in the next couple of lessons as well. So, going back to DNA. DNA is composed of four different bases, and you need to know all of them. C, G, A, and T, but more specifically, cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thymine. We're going to look at how these work together and how this makes up the structure of DNA. So, each of these bases pair with their complementary base, which means the one they match with. They don't match with any other. Cytosine pairs with guanine, and adenine pairs with thymine. So cytosine, for example, cannot pair with adenine or thymine, it can only pair with guanine. You need to know these off by heart, it's a very, very common exam question. The way I like to remember these is that C and G are both curved letters, so if you think the two curved letters match together, and A and T, or AT, match together as well. To look in a bit more detail at the structure of DNA, if you remember back to this, double helix structure is that the backbone of DNA is made up of a phosphate and a sugar that's then attached to a base. The base then attaches to its complementary base pair and then there'll be another sugar and another phosphate. This structure here of the phosphate, the sugar and the base is called a nucleotide. You don't need to know any more detail at a National 5 level. This slide shows it in a bit more detail. So for example you have the blue circle of the phosphate the red sugar, and then the base of A, or adenine, and then thymine, then a sugar, then a base, a uh, phosphate. While we're looking at DNA, we're also going to be looking at something called mRNA, okay, or messenger RNA, which is a different form. What you really need to know at this level is that mRNA is single-stranded, so only one strand, whereas DNA is double-stranded, like we've seen before, the double helix. What we're looking at, as I said previously, is that genetic information found in DNA makes proteins. However, DNA needs to get from the nucleus, so where genetic information is found, to the ribosomes, which hopefully you remember is the site of protein synthesis, or the making of proteins. The only problem with this is that DNA is quite large with this double helix shape in terms of cell biology. mRNA, however, is smaller, and that is used to get out of the nucleus. So, the genetic information found in DNA needs to move from the nucleus to the ribosomes 
in order to make proteins. And we're going to look at the stages of these. In stage one, the DNA, so this double-stranded helix of DNA, starts to unwind. It's like a zipper being unzipped into two separate strands. What then happens is the complementary mRNA molecule is made and lines up with these single strands now. So for example, if one of the strands was um, A, T, G and C, then T, A, C, G would be the complementary strand made by mRNA. So these bases pair up according to these base pair rules that we've looked at. In stage three, the new mRNA strand leaves the nucleus. So it's patched up with the complementary base pairing from the DNA. The mRNA moves through the nuclear pores towards the ribosome. What then happens at the ribosome is the mRNA strand is read with this genetic code and the order of the bases is used to make amino acids. These amino acids then join together in order to make a protein. So DNA to mRNA then goes to the ribosome to then make amino acids and they join up to make a protein. This diagram here is probably worth noting down and then maybe going back through the last few slides and writing down the steps for one, two, three, and four, because this shows the whole process. You have double-stranded DNA, double helix, it unzips, unwinds, the mRNA complementary molecules come across, they move out of the nucleus to the ribosome, where the mRNA is then read into amino acids, and they are made into proteins. That is all you need to know for this key area. It's a, it's a common key area for questions. You need to know all the steps that we've looked at. And really, one of the main things you need to know just off the top of your head every single time are the base pairing rules of A, C, G, T. A couple of past paper questions in this one before I get to the quizzes questions. So this is one from a few years ago asking you to name molecule Y. So like we've done beforehand, I'd like you to pause this, go through it later on, and I'll talk you through the answer. So hopefully you'll have looked that, first of all, this is inside the nucleus, so it has to be the DNA. There is a double helix that has been unzipped, and it means that molecule Y must be the mRNA that's came in, and it's going to be a complementary reading of the A, G, A, G, A, A, to then go across out of the ribosome. So an extension to this question could be, what are the complementary bases? But all this one is asking is, what is molecule Y, which is mRNA? In this question, it's asking you the basic units which are joined together to make a protein at the ribosome. So you should hopefully remember that the mRNA comes to the ribosome, the genetic code is read, and is then turned into amino acids. Amino acids are joined together to make a protein at the ribosome. This is a very common question and a reason why you have to know all of these complementary bases. You could be given a DNA strand and you have to give the complementary DNA strand at the other end. So for example, in this long line here of A, T, G, C, G, A, T, G, C, G, C, T, G, T, C, your complementary base would be T, A, C, G, C, T, A, C, G, C, G, A, C, A, G. Just remember that A matches with T and C matches with G and you'll always get the mark for these questions. This question here, again, of protein synthesis, asks you DNA contains genetic, uh, genetic material which controls the synthesis of a chemical made from amino acids. Name the type of chemical synthesized. Again, just try and get into your head. At the ribosome, site of protein synthesis, amino acids are synthesized or made into proteins. And the diagram above, which we've not seen, shows a section of the code to make a protein such as amylase. Describe how this code to make the protein insulin would differ from this. So you don't need to know anything else in this question. All it is asking is, how would these codes be different? How would the code for amylase be different from the code for insulin? And all you need to know is that different uh, sets of genetic information or different orders of base pairs code for different proteins. That is why they would be different. They have a different order of base pairs, different order of amino acids, and then different proteins. So this is quite a short key area, but it's worth revising over quite a lot. Make sure you know these all off by heart and you'll get all the questions totally right in the exam. 
Uh, again, I'll uh, set up the quizzes. Thanks so much for following these. I'll get the next key area up very uh, soon. Uh, I know some people have been commenting about exams coming up, so we'll try and get through the rest of these. Thanks so much for following. Read over the information and answer the questions. Thank you.